you know, we spend all year um, preparing for the next summer. And so we're in the midst of that right now. And we're already really excited about seeing some new students next year. Um, Alicia, you could go to the next slide. So tonight, um, we are gonna give you a little bit more information um, about our programs. And I'll go ahead and introduce myself and let my colleagues introduce themselves as well before we jump in. My name is Julia Fiore. I'm the Summer Programs Manager and um, I've been at NCSSM for almost five years now. Um, and let's see, Alicia, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Alicia Stokely, and I am the Associate Manager for Summer and Extended Programs. And now I'm going to turn it over to Blake. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for uh, joining us on this Wednesday evening. Um, I am the Associate Manager of Summer Extended Programs here at NCSSM in Durham, and I've been here just a little bit over a year. And so the three of us, um, Alicia, Blake, and I, uh, work closely together to plan and run the summer programs, with Summer Accelerator being our big focus. Um, we also, of course, have an amazing team of colleagues at NCSSM that provide additional support for our programs. Um, but the three of us are the folks you will hear from the most. Um, so tonight we're just going to tell you a little bit more about our programs, um, what to expect for next summer, uh, the application process, and feel free to ask us questions. You can type in the chat. We'll be trying to monitor that throughout the evening. Um, so don't be shy if you have questions or comments. Um, we're going to try to fit a lot of information into an hour. So. I'm sure other things are gonna come up and uh, we'll also share our contact information at the end so that you can reach us afterwards if you think of other things later. All right, next slide. So first is our, our early accelerator program. And this is a program for rising fifth and sixth grade students. It's a day camp. And this is our, our newest program. Um, we have only been running early accelerator programs for a couple of years now. Um, we've kind of started with high school, expanded to middle school, and now we've expanded to rising fifth and sixth graders. So um, the students get to choose a class during the application process, choose a class that they're excited about and interested in, and then they're in that class for the week. Um, the classes run from uh, 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. and we have a break in the middle of the day for lunch and uh, some games, uh, running around outside if the weather's nice, um, getting to interact with students from the other classes as well, um, and just getting a break from the classroom. So um, these are hands-on uh, interactive classes that are really different from what they are gonna be getting in school. Um, and we will be holding these classes this summer in Durham and in Morganton at our new campus. So we're very excited that NCSSM is now gonna have two campuses. Um, we will be um, among the first users of the Morganton campus. It's a beautiful site, a beautiful facility, and we're really excited to be there. Um, and I see in the chat, no Brevard then, that is correct. So next summer, our plan is not to run any programs at Brevard College. Um, in the past, we have run two weeks of programs per summer at Brevard College, but with bringing on Morganton, we decided that next summer, we're gonna focus on that. And um, it doesn't mean we'll never be back in Brevard, but for next summer, that's, that's the plan, just the two campuses. All right. So um, another quick note is that it's a day camp. So, you know, students have to be coming to and from campus every day, but there's no residency restriction. Students could live anywhere. Sometimes we have students um, come and visit their grandparents and stay with them for the week and attend the program if they live in another city or state. And this is for rising fifth and sixth grade, the early accelerator day camp.
All right, so I will have the pleasure of talking with you about our summer accelerator program for what we like to call in-house our middle school group. So this is for rising seventh through ninth graders. Um, again, this is a great way for these students to get a hands-on experience or a virtual experience to interesting STEM topics that they probably will not see at their respective institutions. So during this, um, for our residential courses, they consist of one week. So you will bring your lovely child to either our MCSSM Durham location or our Morganton location, drop them off. They will interact with us as well as our summer staff, engage in extracurricular activities, and then start their week off in their respective course topics. On that Friday, that will be the day where you actually pick up your child. And from the experience that they received that week with also the extracurricular activities, they'll be able to kind of give you a synopsis of what they went through day by day, including that topic. Now, for our middle school um, portion of Summer Accelerator, there is no online component. So if they're doing residential, they will just come from that Sunday to that Friday and will not have to worry about anything online. Now, we do offer fully online courses. Now, this will consist of two weeks. Now, that first week, um, your child will be given at least five to seven hours of work that they will do by themselves. Um, some courses may require um, some type of deadline within those days per the instructor's request. On that second week, they will have required meeting times where they actually meet with the other students in their respective class to talk about the engaging and exciting things that they have already learned before and actually start to do projects or quizzes or um, um, lecture series from that um, respective instructor. Towards the end of that week, that Friday, that will actually conclude that class. So within those two weeks, there are no work um, during the weekend unless that student would like to catch up on something that they're doing um, during that first week when they're working by themselves. Now, again, this is our middle school group. So this is courses that are open for rising seventh through ninth graders. Now, the caveat of this, like we mentioned before for our early accelerator, is that participants do not have to be residents of North Carolina. So as being known as NCSSM, we are known to only take students from North Carolina. One of the reasons why we had this program created is to reach uh, far and beyond North Carolina and to spread the fruits of our labor and the um, incredible staff and instructors that we have in North Carolina. Now let's talk about our high school portion. Now this concludes our rising 10th through 12th graders. So still that hands-on experience, just like you're getting in that middle school group, but just a tad more rigorous. So in this program, students will learn together. Um, some of them will be doing more so project-based, more so than being by themselves. Now, unlike our middle school portion, our rising 10th through 12th graders will have a two-week online component to complete before they step foot through our lovely halls at NCSSM. So during those two weeks, they will work at um, their own pace um, with the deadlines that are set by the instructor per their request. As they are going through a, a wealth of information and research. All of that encompassed together will help them once they step foot on our campus. That's when they start to do the real work with each other, with that instructor, helping them along side by side throughout that week. So just like our middle school program, they will you will drop them off on that Sunday afternoon and you will pick them up on that Friday afternoon. And while they are with us, we will make sure that they're in the best care possible while they're doing class in the morning, the extracurricular time with us in the evening time and when you get them on Friday they will have a lot to share with you. Now if you're unable to come to our campus 
just like our middle school group, we also have an online portion for our high school group. Um, now, this consists of three weeks. So it's still kind of following in the lines of that two-week component while they're working by themselves individually, probably five to seven hours of coursework per week. Now, during that third and final week, they will have required meeting time and meeting with the people that are in that course and their instructor, kind of getting that virtual hands-on attention with that core subject. That's where they can ask more questions to their instructors and really um, get into the course with different projects and things of that sort. Um, like stated before, all of our programs will be held not only at our Durham campus, but at our lovely new Morganton campus. So we're really excited to bring that on board and to have people stay in our dorms for the first time ever. So that's something that your child can say once they leave our program next summer, that they were the first ever, ever to stay um, at NCSS in Morganton. So again, for our high school group, we um, open these courses to rising 10th through 12th graders. And again, participants do not have residents of North Carolina. We offer um, our courses to anyone in the entire world. So if you know anybody that lives out of state, even out of this country, that would um, enjoy this experience of coming to our campus or even um, participating in our online um, structure of programs, definitely send them the link to our website, give them our content information so we can pull them on board. Now, Let's look at some pictures. So these pictures definitely encompass the student life um, experience that we try to inhabit on our campus. As you can see at the top, they are working hard in their group, working with their projects and making sure that they are retaining that information um, that they have learned from their instructors. But at the bottom, you can also see that they work hard and they play hard too. So we also have some candid photos of our students networking and um, learning about each other through various extracurricular activities that we hold on campus, particularly lunch and dinner time. That seems to be kind of the favorite where everybody can just kind of chill and um, have open space to get to know you. Of course, um, with the recent pandemic, um, a lot of summer programming um, was canceled in the year of 2020. 2021 was our first official school year back um, in the summertime. So students were elated to see other people their same age and able to interact with them in class. So we were just so grateful that we were able to pull that off for them. And hopefully for summer 2022, we'll be able to do the same thing. Now, here are some quotes from our students. I like to call this straight from the source. Um, some are from participants and then others are from parents. So let's get down to it. The first one is, I enjoyed the case studies in the class. They were fun and an enjoyable way to learn epidemiology. I love playing basketball in the gym and going out to Pelicans. And glow in the dark, capture the flag was a fun activity too. So this is from a 2021 participant of Summer Accelerator. Now, as you can see from this quote, there is a mixture of things that this student did in class as well as things that they did outside of class. So again, going back to that student life experience, we want to make sure that we are not only filling up that student's time when they are on our campus, but we want to make sure that we are giving them lifelong memories that they can take with them once they leave us and then hopefully come back for summers um, before and to come so they will be able to interact with those same students. Let's go to the next one. I think the fact that I got to take a break from home for a whole week, made friends, and spend time with them. The whole experience built up more day by day, and class was actually so fun. The atmosphere was just so relaxing, but I still learned so much. So again, going back with that, um, you play hard, but you work harder. 
mentality, we try to impact that with our students here at Summer Accelerator. Um, having a great work-life balance, which I'm speaking to myself when I say that, we're trying to also pass that down to our students when they're coming to our um, program as well. So it's just something to think about. Our next one, being able to meet new friends that I will likely spend time outside of camp with, learning new things, having the feel of being away from home in a college-ish setting. So I really like this quote because it really um, speaks a lot about just from that student perspective. And I, I like the play of words, college-ish setting. Um, and that's what NCSSM is. Um, when a lot of people look at the institution from afar and driving by the road or just taking a preview um, of our website, a lot of people think it's a college or a university. Um, and some people, um, once we start to tell them, like, no, we house 11th and 12th graders in the academic year, um, they are baffled and astonished by that. And then when we take it a step further and let them know that, you know, they have their own dorm rooms, it kind of uh, puts in the mindset of, okay, well, these students, when they're coming um, to school here, that they get a taste of that college life. And um, for a lot of them, it helps them transition to that next step. The same thing with residential programs for summer camp, staying away from home, getting that experience to meet new people from different walks of life, different cultural backgrounds. That's your taste of, of college right there. So if you are somebody that has been a little bit anxious of being too far away from home, this could be your, your trial run um, per se, where you're able to learn about an exciting course, meet new people and, and kind of see and get a feel of if this area is something that you want to relocate to um, once you um, matriculate and go to college or um, getting your feet wet for if you want to go somewhere even further away. All right, now I will turn it over to Julia. All right, thanks, Alicia. And I'm just gonna also verbally answer some of the questions that I've been getting in the chat. Some of them have been to everybody and some of them have been direct messages. And I'm guessing that some people might have similar questions to one another. So I wanna just um, clarify um, our kind of three different um, groupings. So we have for rising fifth and sixth graders, we have a day camp program. For rising seventh through ninth graders, we have a residential and an online program. And so a class is either residential or online. Um, and we will be sharing the schedule out um, in a couple of weeks. And so then you can see the course schedule and choose. Um, and then for rising 10th through 12th grade, the classes are also either residential or online. And the residential, the residential program for that age group also has um, two weeks prior to coming to campus, the students begin an asynchronous online portion so that they can get the background knowledge before they come to campus and jump in. So um, I'm hoping that that helps clarify a little bit. Um, and then we will be going over um, admissions criteria and how to apply. Um, and I'm seeing if there are any other questions. Um, Yeah, and then um, another another question that was asked is, um, do they have, um, do they get credit um, for the course? And these are not credit courses, these are enrichment courses. Um, however, we do provide a certificate of completion and um, the student can choose to share that with their school or share that with another program if that's helpful. Um, and students do receive a pass fail grade. Um, for, sorry, for seventh grade and up. Fifth and sixth grade, there's no pass fail grade, um, but we, we do expect the students to participate and enjoy themselves in the program. Um, and, um, and then a couple other questions. Um, so st students in our program are um, typically very excited about doing academic work in the summer. And we get a lot of students who are very advanced academically. Um, our courses are designed to be challenging and rigorous. 
And so we do find that a lot of students who are advanced in school um, do get a lot out of this and are challenged. Um, but, uh, you know, at the same time, everybody's coming from a different background in terms of what their school is like and what other experiences they've had. And I think our instructors do a really great job of paying attention to the individual students and, um, and really um, getting everybody engaged in the content, um, whether, you know, they've, you know, if they're in high school and they've taken all the AP classes or whether, you know, their school doesn't even offer it. Um, and, um, and yes, students can take multiple weeks. Um, those are each signed up for individually. All right, and now I'm gonna give you a little sneak peek of some of the classes we're gonna be offering this summer. Um, we've got a really great lineup coming. We're just confirming all the details before we officially release the schedule with the course descriptions. Um, but for fifth and sixth grade, the early accelerator program, our very popular full steam ahead class is coming back. This class is a, a kind of general science class where the students cover a number of different STEM and STEAM topics. So the A is for arts, um, which I love having the interdisciplinary um, classes in our program. Um, and so full steam ahead Hogwarts Express has a Harry Potter theme. So that's a lot of fun too. Um, and then design for change, environmental and social justice. Students get to work together to tackle big problems. And so they are um, deciding which problems they wanna address. Um, and these can be local problems, global problems. They, it's really student driven. They research the problems and they design solutions together. Um, and then for seventh to ninth grade, we are having another biotechnology um, class come back. So this class is a lot of fun. The students do hands-on lab activities. They explore um, microbes, genomics, fermentation, um, as well as other topics. It's very hands-on. And then um, the space science lab class is taught by a Brevard College physics professor. And um, the students get to work with their own uh, telescopes and learn how to use them and study um, the science of space. It's very, very cool. And um, then for the 10th to 12th grade, um, I'm very excited that we're gonna be able to offer a couple different types of neuroscience classes this summer. Um, so one of them comes from a more experiential side where the students are um, learning neuroscience and psychology concepts. And then the other side is the more experimental side, um, which is uh, involves cockroaches. So if you're a little squeamish, um, maybe you don't want to take that one, but, um, <laughs> but the students actually get to um, learn about neuroscience using cockroaches. And then lastly, um, we are going to have a new class this summer um, on Python and data science. And this is taught by one of our NCSSM math instructors um, who is so passionate about math and about coding um, that it is going to be a super interesting class. So I'm very excited about all of that. And um, some of the classes, to answer the question in the chat, some of the classes are taught by NCSSM teachers, some are taught by other teachers. So we have a big variety. Um, most of them are taught by NCSSM instructors. Um, some are taught by other teachers from other schools. Some are taught by um, college professors. Some are taught by industry um, and nonprofit experts um, in their particular field. Um, and so they can bring a slightly different approach to the content. Are there any questions that I'm missing? Okay, I think I'm good for now. <laughs> I think it's on to Blake. That's right. Um, so I'm gonna go over just a little bit about how to apply for our program. Um, part one, there's a couple different parts, first of all, and part one is more of a 
um, general information, you know, you're doing your research on the website about which courses you want to you want to look at uh, and select and apply for. Uh, and then, you know, your contact information, email address, all that good stuff. Um, and when you get to like the courses that you are um, interested in, we ask you that you rank the ones that you would like to attend in order of, of preference. Um, so you don't need to rank every course you see, but if you're interested in three of them, just rank one, two, and three. Um, that The link right there is the link that will get you to the application. Um, there is also a way to do that through our website um, on ncssm.edu on the Summer Accelerator page. There's a direct link where you can um, go that route as well. Go ahead and go to the next slide for me. All right, so the um, second part of the application, and just to clarify, this is just for the seventh to 12th grade students, and this is to be done by the actual student. The first part needs to be filled out by a uh, parent or guardian. Um, so you, in the past, we have called this portion of the application essay questions. Uh, but we have changed it to short answer questions because we uh, have found that the word essay is, um, you know, very can be very intimidating. We don't want it to be intimidating. Um, so short answer questions, what we really want from that is, you know, no more than three or four or five sentences in some cases. Um, and the questions you see on the screen right here are the questions that we will ask you to um, answer on your application. Um, just to clarify, um, the fifth and sixth graders do not need to do this part, just to be clear on that. Um, however, if you were an early accelerator student last year and you're transitioning into the accelerator program, we would ask you to do that. Um, I know there's some alumni on here as well. If you are an alumni of the program and you were in the program in years past, you do not have to complete the short answer questions. All right. I have a couple of frequently asked questions, FAQs um, to go through here. One we get a lot is, will I receive credit? Uh, as, as mentioned a little bit earlier, our courses are pass fail for, the, uh, for grades. Um, every student will get a certificate of completion um, and it's up to your school whether, you know, they count it as credit. For online student, for NCSSM online students, the course will show up on your transcript um, to count towards credit for your program, but it does not count um, for your GPA. All right, another one we get a lot uh, is, can I enroll in classes with overlapping dates? I think we had this question in the chat a little bit earlier, absolutely is the answer. Um, you might not want to enroll in classes that have overlapping um, required class meeting times. For example, um, you know, you don't wanna, obviously don't wanna enroll in two residential programs at the same time or a class that has meeting times um, online while you're in residential either. So um, just make sure you're double checking the dates and, and the meeting times before you start and decide applying for multiple courses. All right. All right. Um, this is basically a long answer as, a, as uh, in regards to COVID-19 for we don't know yet. Um, you know, it's an ever, ever changing situation uh, and we follow uh, the UNC systems guidance as well as CDC guidance. Um, and we will make that decision um, as far as protocols in the spring. Uh, we will email out the, the regulations and rules and what we expect from our students coming to uh, the residential programs um, in the spring. Another one we get a lot is does dark does participating in the summer accelerator program help me get into the online or residential program here at NCSSM? Um, short answer, it, it is, is no. Um, we know it 
you know, it, it appreciate that it shows interest in the in the topics that NCSSM has, um, but that you're not going to be given special treatment um, or referred to admissions for attending our programs. All right, and just for um, as far as scholarship and discount opportunities, we have those all listed out on our website here. Um, and they should be pretty much, they will be up to date sooner rather than later. All right, so. Um, back on speaking again. Um, I am seeing there are still some questions in the chat. Um, Julia, you are beating me to all of them, so I'm going to let you keep going, and I'm going to keep with the presentation. Um, so, um, of course, the question that we have been getting the most um, ever since we ended our past summer is when are we going to release courses, and when are we going to open up the application? Um, so as you can see right here, um, our release date is as followed. December 8th, or by December 8th, we will have all courses uploaded to our website. So you'll be able to see the full schedule for both our Durham um, Morganton and our online um, programs. And that concludes also early acceleration and Summer Accelerator. And I know some people up here are probably interested in Step Up to STEM. That application will also open on December 8th as well. So definitely put that in your calendar. If you need a reminder, um, please make sure that you have signed up to our mailing list. We will be sending um, an email out and I will personally send an email to um, all of the people that registered for this information session, just so you are made aware that um, our application and our courses are available for you to view. So once it is up, definitely make sure that you take a peek at it. Ask um, your potential student that's right beside you um, of what um, they would love to do and definitely sign up. So speaking of Step Up to STEM, so of course this information session it is catered to Summer Accelerator and Early Accelerator, but we wanted to make sure um, that we were also representing our other program that we um, house in our department. So Step Up to STEM is a free one week residential summer program for underrepresented minority students. Now that consists of Native American, Hispanic, and also African-American students. So with this program, there's um, certain um, other elements to it as far as criteria. So in order to apply to this program, you have to be a current eighth grader or a rising ninth grader at the point um, of that application um, process. Now, these courses are taught by our skilled instructors at NCSSM. Um, and um, since we are in the process of expanding, um, our courses will not only be taught by NCSSM instructors, but also other college um, professors at an institution that we are partnering with. So I don't want to give away too much during this information session um, since we will have a, a, a brand new um, um, updated site for Step to STEM with all of the exciting things that we're preparing for. it. There are new things coming along the way. So with this, students will learn exciting real world subjects um, to build their skills in STEM. Um, uh, the premise of this program is to help immerse um, these students in STEM so one day they can think about um, applying to college and actually majoring in STEM, or maybe think about a career in the STEM field. So we kind of want to get those creative juices flowing um, with them and then also connect with them to, to make sure that they have the resources that they need um, to matriculate um, through high school and through their, their STEM courses. So 
for all of the new information that we're going to have to step up the stem. It is currently being updated at the moment. Um, it does have some current information, um, but more information will be soon to come. Um, they will also host their own information session, so please be on the lookout on that website to see that date and time. So the website is ncssm.edu slash step up, and I am going to put that in the chat. Um, so you'll be able to click on it at your leisure and also view it um, if that is something um, to your liking. Also, we want you to follow us and, and stay connected. So one of the things that we try to do um, is to make sure that we have the student experience in person and then also virtually. So what better way to do that is through social media. So we have three social media accounts associated with Summer Accelerator. And um, with them, they all have their own purpose. So you get to pick and choose which one um, best suits your needs. So for our Twitter account, you can follow that account if you want to learn about interesting science facts or inspirational quotes, study tips for in-person and online and more. Um, like our Facebook page if you just want straight up news about what's happening with our programs, when we release those course dates, important updates, let's say that we are running a special on a particular course, and also a chance to win prizes and also talk about Summer Accelerator and how you feel about it. And lastly, um, follow our Instagram page to see what happens this summer accelerator in real time. So during the academic year, we're um, doing some other um, promotional posts and then also some weird science facts and um, also course spotlights and instructor spotlights. But when the summer comes around, we actually give live feed into what's happening on our campuses. You get to meet our residential counselors and kind of get a little taste of who is with your student as they are with us on campus, as well as seeing what they're doing. I'm um, seeing candid photos of them in class and also when they are participating in those um, extracurricular activities that I was mentioning before. Um, so definitely make sure that you're, you're following that um, and seeing all of the good work that we are doing here at Summer Accelerator. So at this point, I, I know we've um, answered a, a lot of questions in the chat, but we still want to give time at the end for you to ask any more questions that you may have had. Um, as you can see from more info, we do have our website listed, ncssm.edu slash accelerator. Um, in the chat before, I did put an email address. So this is an email address that will come to all three of us um, to make sure that we are keeping up with the email volume and also making sure that we are answering them in a timely fashion. It is best to email the summer account. So at any given time, um, one of us will be able to respond back to you. So definitely keep that in mind when you have um, other questions that um, maybe you can't think of at the moment, or if you are working on that application and you need somebody to help you with at that time. So if you do have any other questions, just feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, between uh, Julia and myself, um, and Blake, um, we will definitely um, answer them. Okay. All right, so, yeah, go ahead. An overview of some of the discounts that are available. We have sibling discounts. We have um, multi-session discounts. We have an early bird discount. We have alumni discounts for students who have participated in a previous year with Summer Accelerator. Um, so we do have a number of different discounts um, and we also have financial aid scholarships thanks to um, a lot of generous donations from um, Anonymous Trust is one of them um, as well as um, individual families um, and donors. We have um, a lot of financial aid available. So we're Really glad um, that we get to offer that. Um, the application will open December 8th. We will post the um, course list as soon as we confirm everything. It's a lot of moving parts, so I'm not gonna promise that it's gonna be available uh, ahead of time, but that's our 
aim. So depending on uh, how quickly all of our moving parts get sorted, um, we will go ahead and post it on our website. And if you're on our email list, you'll also get notifications um, for when uh, the course schedule is posted and the application is open so that you don't have to remember to keep checking the website. So definitely recommend signing up for our email list if you're not already on it. Um, Alicia, if folks signed up for this um, session, are they now on the email list? They are in one of our email lists that we will definitely um, communicate with, but they're not in the actual mailing list. Now, some people are in this list, are already a part of the mailing list, they'll get double the amount of emails about our course release. And um, I'm just gonna keep answering some questions that are coming through the chat. Thank you, Alicia. Um, yeah. The application remains open until the courses are full. And so um, some of the courses, and I think I typed this in the chat, some of the courses do start filling as early as January. Um, although most um, classes will have some space into the spring. So we have, um, we just leave the application open until, um, until it's summer, basically. We also have a wait list. So once a class um, fills up, we start adding, adding people to the wait list and then we'll let you know if a space opens up for your student. Great, here's one quick question. Um, some people have been um, direct messaging me about, and then I also saw it in the open um, chat was, will the recording of the meeting be sent out later? And that answer is yes. So we are currently recording it now after this meeting, after it does its thing and sends it back to me via email, um, or work with our team to get it uploaded to our NCSSM YouTube account. And then we'll also upload it to our website. Once that is complete, I will send out an email through um, all the people that signed for our information session, as well as our mailing list. Oh, I see another one. Can a student do both Step Up the STEM and Summer Accelerator? And that is a big yes. Um, and also with that, uh, we have a, a great number of scholarship funds that we recently received from um, some uh, great donors. Um, and that will also be updated on our website so you can receive more information about that. Um, I saw a lot of people um, in the beginning when you were putting down where you were located. Um, I saw a lot of people in the Eastern area, which really excited me um, because we have a lot of funds to kind of give your way. So definitely be on the lookout, look at um, our website, look at our FAQs, also on the application if you are in need of financial assistance or um, be interested in a scholarship, please. Um, click on that check mark on um, our application and make sure that you're specifying that somewhere. And then we will reach out to you personally um, to help you go through that process. Um, I see a question about the Morganton campus, whether it will open on time. And the answer is yes. Um, the good news is the um, staff and faculty in the Morganton campus that are already there have moved into the buildings, the office building on campus. Um, so that's very exciting. Um, and so the original date of the Morganton campus opening was actually going to be fall 2021 and it got delayed due to the state budget. So, uh, you know, now that gave us an extra year to continue getting the campus ready for the students. It, there was that delay when the budget did not, did not pass for so long but now um, the campus is moving along really nicely and um, it will be ready for our students this summer. Um, it'll be ready before then, it'll be ready this spring, but um, we're very excited to be some of the first occupants as well. Um, and uh, let's see, what other questions do we have? Yeah, I have a couple of them. So one of them I'm reading now, um, my older one is an NCSSM alumni. Will the sibling discount apply to my younger one? So the answer to that is no. The sibling discount will only apply if both of them together are applying um, for um, our programs at that time. Um, that's when that will come into effect. Uh, another um, one I see is can a student drop courses after signing if another class opens up? Um, 
the short answer is yes. So um, while you are applying, uh, we ask for your first, second, and third choice um, because our classes do tend to fill up very quickly. So as you're doing that and as we are um, reviewing your application, depending on if your first choice is full or not, we may put you in the second one. Now, um, during that time, let's say that a seat opens up in that first course and we're able to move um, you over. Um, then that would be simply okay. However, let's say that um, you see another course that um, captures your interest and you immediately drop and the course is starting kind of like a, a week um, away. Um, that is something that you will have to contact us to, to make sure that you're doing that properly because on your application, um, there is no way for you to switch to another course. So any type of switching, you will have to go through us. So just kind of make sure that you keep that in mind as well. And I see a question about the general timeline for the classes. Um, while we're going to release the specific schedule, um, in a couple of weeks, the um, general schedule is going to be um, June and July. And so our plan is to offer programs starting June 12th, if that's whatever day of the week that is. Um, <laughs> we are we're going to offer three weeks of programs in June, then have one week off for the 4th of July, and then offer three more weeks in, Ju in, in July. So uh, June and July, not every single week at both campuses. Um, in Durham, we are gonna have six weeks for residential programs, um, but in Morganton, it's gonna be a little bit shorter. It's gonna be four or five weeks for residential programs. And um, for early accelerator day camp programs for fifth and sixth grade, we're looking at five weeks in Durham and uh, two weeks in Morganton. And again, not, not completely finalized, so don't hold me to it, but um, that's the current plan. Um, yes, and also while we are still kind of getting everything together, um, please, please bear with us as we are updating the, the site. Um, you may be able to see some of this happen in real time um, and come to the site back later on that day and see something completely different. So please bear with us during that time. Um, the, the last question that I see up here, um, are there any financial um, qualification requirements for this, this counts and where can we find this info? Um, we are currently updating this information and will be located on our our website. Um, as far as financial qualifications for different scholarships and financial aid, um, we will send that out in a separate email um, if you specify on the application that that is something that you're interested in. It's easier to do that because it is a, another a mouthful of information um, to give to you. Now, on our website, on our admissions page, and also on our FAQ page, we do kind of um, have a short synopsis of how that process will go. You will fill out a fax application, which is a kind of a third party that um, we have you fill out their application so they can tell us um, how much um, we are able to give to you. Um, but definitely if you want more um, in-depth information about that, when you're filling out the application, please specify that you would like to apply for um, scholarship or financial aid assistance. And yes, we do have, um, we, don't, we, we don't have like a payment plan that's official, um, but you can pay in increments that you choose as long as we get the payment by the deadline. And then even if the deadline is a problem and um, you're not able to make that deadline, just contact us, let us know, and um, we'll work with you on that. We want your student to be able to come to the program and we don't want like a payment that's one week late to be the barrier. So um, definitely just contact us um, if you have questions about that or um, want an extension. Um, we're happy to work with you, but we do need to know in advance. Um, Cause if we, basically if we don't get a payment, we think, oh, I guess that person's not coming anymore. If we don't hear from you and we don't get the payment, we think, well, it sounds like that student maybe isn't coming because we haven't heard anything. So we're going to let this next person in off the wait list and drop them from the class. But if we hear from you, then we can work with you on it. So just keep in communication if you have questions or need anything throughout the spring leading up to the program. 
Oh, we did get a question. I know, Julie, you will love. Um, somebody asked, how would one go about becoming a teacher and teaching a course over the summer? Um, so one of the things we're actually doing now is going over um, this application process. So and in order to be considered to teach for summer accelerator, early accelerator, even step of the stem in some instances, you will fill out a course proposal. Um, so this course proposal pretty much lays out our program um, down to um, what you receive per day, um, the outline and the structure of the classes and our expectations from you as well. Um, as you're filling out this form, you'll be able to create your, your own course. Um, I, I love to say to potential instructors that you can use this as a guinea pig, you had a fun and an exciting topic that you didn't get to explore with your students during the academic year, do it here at Summer Accelerator. Um, if you have something that you want to try in the future, but you would like to try it on a, a small amount of students to make sure that you get the curriculum down pat. Do it here at Summer Accelerator. So we are here to feed the young minds of North Carolina and beyond. And we can't do that without um, inspiring instructors that just want to try something new or perfect something that they've already done at their um, prospective institutions. So um, in the coming year, we're actually going to be doing something different with our course proposals. First off, there will be a website dedicated to potential instructors on our website that will um, be online shortly. Um, on that, we'll have a... Um, our course proposal up there for you to read as well as all of the nitty gritty things, um, as well as the form that you will fill out as well. And we're trying to operate that to be open um, year round. Um, so you can put your ideas when you're thinking about it and also when you have the time to. Um, and then depending on the time period that you submitted, um, will ultimately determine when your application will be up for review. So if you do have any more questions about that, make sure that you send us an email at summer at ncssm.edu. We can make sure that you are on our instructor list and make sure that you have um, all of the materials um, for you so you can read about it and then also um, give your shot for um, the years to come. And this other question is about if there are teaching assistants, mentors, um, counselors, residential life staff. And the answer is yes to all of the above. All that. Um, yeah. We have um, not every class has a teaching assistant. It depends on the needs of that instructor and um, the needs of the class. For example, you know, some of the classes that are smaller and um, can be managed by one instructor. That's what it is. The instructor is fine with, with that. Some of the classes that have um, that are either larger or have certain hands-on components that require additional supervision, for example, our creative digital fabrication class um, or um, heavy lab component classes um, where there's a lot of materials and um, experiments going on. Um, those tend to have either co-instructors um, or um, teaching assistants. And then outside of class time, students do a whole big range of activities. So um, we have residential life staff who lead those. Um, They're awesome. A lot of them have attended NCSSM when they were in high school. And now they come back because they wanna give back to the school, give back to the students and um, also have fun because it's a really fun job. Um, so these folks live on campus with the students to ensure their safety. Um, they come up with creative and fun activities so that the students get um, social interaction. They get um, kind of additional learning like outside of the classroom. Um, I think that's one of the things that's special about our program, the residential side of it, is that the students really learn a lot about themselves they learn things socially because they get to meet different people and then they get to experience new things that maybe they've never tried before. We take the kids on field trips. We um, have on-campus activities. Um, some are more fun and silly and social. Some are more academic, like a resume workshop. Um, some are just relaxing. Like sometimes the students have had a long day and they just wanna chill out in the library or they wanna have a movie night. And so we offer a big variety of activities. Um, uh, sometimes we do sports, 
Um, so we offer a lot of different activities and our counselors um, who lead them are really amazing and they make the program so much fun. Right, we do have classes in July, so yeah. um, yes. I think that was our last question. Anybody else have any other questions? And if we missed one of your questions, it's not because we're trying to ignore you. It's probably just because there were so many questions coming in. So feel free to type it back in so mm -hmm. that we see it now. Or feel free to email us. Um, at that summer at ncssm.edu account. All right, well, it is 6.59 on the dot. Um, thank you so much for all of your questions, just for being here. Um, I know some people have already left um, because it is a, a school night. So thank you so much for attending. Again, this session was recorded and will be uploaded to our site. You will receive an email um, once that is complete. Thank you thank again. Thank you so much, everyone. Really appreciate you coming and feel free to reach out with other questions. Thank mm -hmm. you.